Okay, I've got a few things I want to share with you this morning. The questions that I'm going to deal with, or the issue I'm going to deal with, has, was forwarded to me by one of my old King David students, Jake Rosen, who is studying at UCT at the moment. So Jake, here's the answer. It's a bit of a long answer, but I think it will help you understand future issues that might be related to this. So the first one I want to start with, we're talking about derivatives. If we look at the function f of x, and the function f of x is the absolute value of x. And we want to differentiate it. We can do it in one of two ways. The first way that we can use is we can unfold this with the definition. The definition says f of x is x if x is bigger or equal to naught, or it's minus x if x is less than naught. So it's derivative, and at this point you must be very careful because you know at the salient point of the absolute value function it's not differentiable. Okay, so be careful. The derivative of x is 1 if x is strictly bigger than 0, or it is minus 1 if x is less than 0. Now, that's not really very helpful, but the answer is perfect. There's nothing wrong with that answer. We actually differentiated the function. The one we're going to work with mostly from here onwards is applying the definition that the absolute value of x is nothing other than the square root of x squared, which we can write as a power. And a function that has a power on it has, let me just kill all my emails. My emails aren't open. I don't know why things are coming through, but in any case, then that is x squared. Okay, so if I now go and differentiate this function, I'm going to apply the chain rule. It's going to be a half times x squared to the minus a half multiplied by the derivative of what is inside of the bracket, which is 2x. So this becomes the half and the 2 cancel one another out. The x is at the top and at the bottom we have the root of x squared. So that will be x over the absolute value of x. And this is the one that we're going to use from now on to work with our derivatives. Okay, so that takes care of the derivative of an absolute value. Let's pick up the pace a little bit or the, 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 the complexity. If we just go f of x is twice the absolute value of 2x minus 3 then we can see this here as a composition of functions. We can say that f of x is g of, let's say, m of x, where g of x is the absolute value function, and m of x is the linear function 2x minus 3. Okay, and then we can differentiate them separately and join them in the result. So if I find the derivative there, we've just seen the derivative of an absolute value function is x over the absolute value of x. The derivative of this linear function m prime x is just going to be 2. So if we go back to the initial function, the derivative of f of x, it will be the derivative of g um, in m of x multiplied by the derivative of m of x. Now, I'm sure you'll recognize this rule. This rule is called our chain rule for derivatives. Okay, now with that there, let's simplify this whole thing. The derivative there is x over the absolute value of x. But now remember, x was the 2x minus 3, the inside function. So you might just want to, instead of saying x here, say it's g of u, and then the u is 2x minus 3, if you want to. Multiply it by its derivative there, which is 2. So if I substitute back, I get 2 times 2x minus 3 over the absolute value of 2x minus 3. You can take the 2 in if you want to. It's 4x minus 6 over the absolute value of 2x minus 3. So that takes care, I think, 
of the easy ones dealing with the absolute value. Let's step up the complexity even more. Let's go and look at number three. Number three, I'm going to look at f of x being the function, the absolute value of the trig function sine x. Now let me just bring everything down a bit so I have space. Okay, if I look at this, I can define my inside function. So I can say this is g of m of x again, where g of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Note that I remove the absolute value of x in the most convenient way that I can. Okay, and then my m of x is going to be the sine of x. So if I differentiate g um, of x, I get x over the absolute value of x. Now, folks, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something interesting about what we've got over there just now. The derivative of m is the derivative of sine x, which is cos x, multiplied by the derivative of the angle, which is one. If that was the sine of 2x, it would be cos x times 2. Okay, so finally, my first derivative with respect to x is going to be x. But now remember, x here is equal to the sine of x over there. So we get sine x over the absolute value of sine x multiplied by the cosine of x. Now you can do a lot with this. You can bring in the double angle if you want to. But you've literally done most of the work that was needed is done in that step. Now just be careful if they do ask you in an exam to simplify it or to show that it's something else. I mean the, 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 the one that they could have asked you is to show that it's a half sine 2x over the absolute value of sine x, for instance. It's just that compound angle or that double angle that is hidden over there. Okay, so that makes good sense to remember. Yeah, let us look at the next one. The next one that I've got in line for us is number four. Now, number four is the same thing. We're still dealing with just to get used to the absolute value. But let's say this is 3x squared times the sine of 4x. Now, here you've got to be careful because there's not just two functions here. Yeah? There's three functions. There's the outside function, which is going to be my absolute value. Then there's two inside functions, 3x squared and then the sine of 4x. So we've got to be very, very careful. So we're going to say g of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Then we're going to use that product. We're going to say, let's just call it p of x, which is equal to 3x squared, and q of x, which is the sine of 4x. And we're going to, when we differentiate here, we're not going to differentiate them separately. We're going to ch uh, use the product rule. So overall, it's the chain rule, then the product, and you'll see within the product rule, we'll have to apply the chain rule again because of the derivatives that we're working with. So here, g prime x is nothing other than x over the absolute value of x. We've seen that before. Okay, and now if I want to dx this px multiplied by qx, that's what I'm actually looking at, it is the product rule. Okay, so it's the derivative of the first one, which is 6x multiplied by sine of 4x plus 3x squared multiplied by the derivative of sine, which is cos 4x multiplied by the derivative of the angle 4x, which is then 4. So if I clean this up, it's 6x sine of 4x plus 12x squared cos of indeed 4x. Okay, remember the derivative of sine is cos. If I was differentiating cos, the derivative of cos is minus sine. Okay, so in we go. We've got 
our derivatives ready, so now we can say the initial function f prime x is g of p of x times q of x. Okay, so if we want to differentiate it, it's that multiplied by the derivative of p of x times q of x. Now remember, if you differentiated q of x over there, q of x, it's the chain rule for that derivative. So all we need to do is now go back and substitute our values back in. Okay, so this will be 3x squared times the sine of 4x over the absolute value of 3x squared times the sine of 4x over there, multiplied by that bracket 6x sine 4x plus 12x squared cos 4x. And now you can pretty much from there, that's the job is done there. All that they can do now is they can give you a different form of that. So if we quickly just glance our eye across this, we can remove 6x as a common factor and multiply it in there. Then we can, well, yeah, th th there's a few things you can do. Those things are really just arbitrary and they are there for you to sort of get to an answer if they didn't stop the answer at that point to get to the answer that they want you to get at. Now what I'm going to show you now I find very, very fascinating and interesting. So let's go, I think this is example 5, yes, that I've prepared. So f of x here, we're going to look at the lin of the absolute value of x. And at the same time, let's look at g of x, which is the lin of x. Now, if we want to differentiate this, we know the derivative of g of x is simply just 1 over x. We know that. That's a rule. That's what I call a referent rule. You've got to know that rule so that you can apply it in problems that appear more complex. Okay, so let's look at this. We can look at this one in one of two ways. We can go via our normal definition, like I did in the previous one, where we actually go and we do this to the function. So I'm going to do it with this rule over there. Okay, so if I now um, rewrite this, I get the lin of the absolute value of x. Now, the absolute value of x is the square root of x squared. Okay, like that. And then I can say this is nothing else but x squared to the power of a half. Okay, and when I'm differentiating that, I'm going to use my chain rule once again. So if I now f prime x this, this becomes, now remember the lin of anything, the lin of anything is 1 over that one thing. So this will be 1 over the square root of x squared, which is nothing other than the absolute value of x. Okay, then multiplied by the derivative of this, which is a half x squared to the minus a half times 2x. So let me just go step back one step. What did I do here? I differentiated the lin of x, which is nothing other than the derivative of lin of something is 1 over that something. There we have it. Multiplied then by that derivative, whatever was there on the inside of our function, which in this case was what we have over here, the derivative of this thing that's over there. Okay? And that derivative is the power comes down, the function remains the same, alt power minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Now the poetry here again is that the 2 and the 2 says goodbye. So what we left with is 1 over the absolute value of x multiplied by x over the absolute value of x. Now I want you to look at this. This is magic, absolute magic. Let's just on the side here discuss what is x over the absolute value of x. Well, it is 
x over the square root of x squared. Now if I perform a nice trick here and I multiply with 1, but I'm multiplying with a special form of 1, the root of x squared over x squared, then I get x times the root of x squared, the root times the root, the root disappears, and I'm finally left with only x squared in the denominator. Now look at this. The x in the numerator takes care of the power, so I have root of x squared over x. And what is the root of x squared? It's the absolute value of x over x. Wow, that's magic. So what did we just see? We saw the absolute value of x over the absolute value of x is the same as the absolute value of x over x. This is going to become very useful in our work. So if we want to simplify this, we can say this is 1 over absolute value of x times absolute value of x over x. The two absolute values goes, and I have 1 over x, which is another layer of huge surprise. Look at this. What did this just show us? It showed us that the derivative with respect to x of lin absolute value of x is the same as the derivative with respect to x of lin x. And what is this? This is 1 over x. So the, the derivative for those two is 1 over x. We're going to use that. Why not? Why suffer with long and tedious things when we can use things that make our life much easier? Okay, so with that then in our arsenal, let us go, and I'm going to leave it there for us because we most probably going to refer back to it. Let's just lift the bar once more, Jake, before we get to your questions. So if I have h of x, h of x is the lin of cosine squared x in the absolute value. Okay, so this one is a bit simpler than the previous one where we had 3x squared times sine. This still consists of two functions. Okay, so our inside function, we're going to call, or our outside function rather, the absolute value of x where x is equal to cosine squared of x. And here, we're going to sum a p of x this. p of x is cosine squared x. So if I take my derivative here, my derivative, as I saw, of the absolute value, it's actually the lin of that absolute value. Sorry. I need to take my lin with. I want to get rid of both of them. Why? because I saw that the derivative of the lin of ab x is 1 over x. Okay, so this derivative is going to be 1 over x, which is the cosine squared of x, for now. Okay, my derivative p with respect to x will then be, now remember this is the cos of x power on the outside. So it's twice the cosine of x, to the power of 1 multiplied by the derivative of cos which is minus the sine of x and then multiplied by the derivative of the angle which is 1. Okay, remember if that was 4x that derivative would be 4. So I'm finally ready. My derivative of h with respect to x is going to be 1 over cosine squared x times this minus 2 times the cosine of x, the sine of x. Okay, so if we look carefully, what did I do? I just multiplied the negative to the front over here. So what does this give me? Let's simplify this. Minus 2, cos takes care of the square. I have a sine x at the top, a cosine x at the bottom, so it's minus twice the tan of x. Now remember I said your job is done there. What would have been an alternative answer for this derivative? Could have been that you could have used your double angle there. So you'll have minus the sine of 2x divided by cosine squared x as an answer as well. All of that, the, the, the job is done, folks. As I said, the job is done in the step where you've done 
your derivative. Okay, so you don't have to really do more than that unless they sneak in. They say show that the derivative is equal to that or that the derivative is equal to this or possibly something else. Okay, so let us get to the questions that you submitted. The first one says f of x is equal to the lin, which we've discussed now, of the cotangent of x. Again, we are faced with two functions. The outside function, we're going to bring the lin out and the absolute value of x, where x is equal to the cot of x. Again, remember what I said, you can make this a u and that a u and say u is equal to the cot of x. Um, yeah. So from there, our derivative we saw for lin x is simply just 1 over x and x is the cot of x. So that takes care of that. Now the derivative of the inside. P of x is the cotangent of x. So what is the derivative of the cotangent? It's minus cosec squared x times the derivative of the angle, which is 1. Okay, and that's how simple it is. So now your derivative in full will be the first thing, 1 over the cotangent of x multiplied by minus cosec squared x. I can just write it nicely minus cosec squared x over the cot of x. Now again you can have different variations of that answer. Cosec squared is 1 over sine squared. Cot is cos over sine. So you can have minus sine cubed x over cos x if that is an answer for you. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Let's look at the last one. The last one you gave me was y is equal to log base 3 of the absolute value of tan squared x. Now this is a mouthful, but I love this question. This We've got to do some work here before we can actually differentiate the, the question itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the change of base law. I don't want to log there. I want log base e there. I want lin there. So this is going to be, remember, your change of base says the log base a of b is log b over log a. I'm going to apply that, but I'm going to say lin b over lin a. Log. This is log base 10 of b, log base 10 of a. I want log base e because I've got a rule for that. So this is going to be the lin of the absolute value of tan squared x over the lin of that 3. And look at this, Jake. You have a lin 3 in a denominator. That is a number. So we can remove it. It makes it easier. So this is 1 over the lin of 3 multiplied by the lin of the absolute value of tan squared x. And we're going to go forward with that component. Okay, our function is called y, so let's call this f of x is the lin of x, where x is equal to tan squared x. So the derivative of f of x is just simply 1 over x, and x is tan squared x. Then the derivative of tan squared. So also we've got g of x, and g of x, I've got enough space here, is the tan of x all squared. I'm writing it like that so you can see chain rule. Okay, so if I differentiate g of x, g prime x is going to become twice the tan of x, power comes down multiplied by that 1, multiplied by the derivative of tan squared, and that derivative is sec squared x times the derivative of the angle. Now all that's left for us here is to take that back into the question. So here we can say dy dx is then 1 over lin 3, remember the number, multiplied by 1 over tan squared of x 
multiplied by this 2 tan x times sec squared of x times the 1. Now what can I do there? Well I can just cancel over here. So I have 1 over the lin of 3. The tan takes the square away. The sec squared 2 sec squared in fact is left at the top and at the bottom I have the tan of x. Now you can go forward with this in many ways okay but yeah we can leave it over there we can also say this is 1 over cos squared this is sin over cos so the causes cancel each other out and you can work with a double angle at the end of the day uh, in this situation okay but you've done all the work over there most of the work is done so if they ask you for show that it is something you work from this uh, onwards towards the thing that they asked you to show that this is equivalent to. Okay, folks, I hope that that helped. Um, if you enjoyed the video and you learned something, please like the video. Send me questions. I welcome those questions. So like the video, subscribe, and give me comments below.